The latest version of Blender, which is now Blender 3.4, has been released by the Blender Foundation. The updates are really good, but I'm only going to speak on the five of the most significant changes, along with the smaller updates to the core toolset, including animation and file import, plus a bonus feature for motion graphics artists. I bet Cinema 4D users who hopped on Blender are going pumped up as the day goes by because bit by bit, they are being saved. My first significant update is called Path Guiding in Cycles. Blender 3.4 now supports path guiding in the cycles renderer. With path guiding enabled, Cycles analyzes the light distribution in the scene and uses that information to guide the light paths. That makes the most significant contribution to a renderer. Now, by prioritizing paths that interact with surfaces in the scene, path guiding improves sampling, helping the render to resolve to an acceptably low level of noise more quickly. Its effect is most noticeably in scenes with complex indirect lighting, such as a multi-bounce diffuse illumination or multi-scattering. It can also help with rendering simple caustics, as in the image above, although unlike manifold next event estimation introduced in Blender 3.2, it isn't specifically designed for that task. The feature was implemented using Intel's new Open Path Guiding library and is currently only available when rendering on CPU. My second significant update revolves around geometry nodes. Geometry Node is set to receive its biggest update in Blender 3.5 when the node system is set to evolve from a procedural modeling and object scattering toolset into a procedural simulation framework. However, there are still a number of important changes, such as the option to use the viewer node to preview the output of a node tree in the viewport, not just the spreadsheet. Now this is to make debugging node network a more intuitive process, as shown in the video above. Other key changes include the option to retrieve the attribute of instances created by geometry nodes, making it possible to use instances in more creative ways, such as this sprite-based real-time fire effect. There are also new sets of nodes for retrieving topology information for meshes and curves, plus distribute points in volume, which creates points inside volume grids. My third update is going to be the neat new auto masking option in sculpt mode. The auto masking option in Blender sculpt mode has been extended in Blender 3.4, providing new ways to mask out parts of the surfaces of a model for sculpting or 3D painting. It is now possible to generate a cavity mask automatically for a sculpt, such as the one used to paint the dirt in the pulse of the face of the character above, rather than having to apply one manually. Users can now fine tune the results via controls to invert or blur the mask or to change its blend mode. It is also now possible to mask a sculpt by viewpoint, making it possible to paint only those parts of its surface visible for a given direction. My fourth update is going to be the new geometry-based UV Relax Brush. Blender's UV tools get a number of updates, the biggest being the new geometry-driven Relax Brush mode. Unlike using the existing Relax Brush in 2D texture space, it makes the UV follow the geometry of the model more closely, as shown in the video above, improving the quality of the UV mapping. There are also new options for packing UVs, adjusting UV islands, and customizing the background grid in Blender's UV editor. My number 5 is new story pencil add-on for Blender storyboarding. Outside the core application, Blender 3.4 gets a new storyboarding add-on, Story Pencil, developed by the same team responsible for Blender's Grease Pencil 2D animation toolset and already tested in production. Although it's already possible to create an animated storyboard using Grease Pencil, Story Pencil ties it into Blender's video sequence editor, making it much easier to reorder or retime shots. It exports both video and image sequences, making it possible to create animatics or static storyboards. Okay, so now let's focus on other updates to the core two sets. The upcoming Animation 2025 project, notwithstanding Blender's character rigging and animation two sets, only gets a few workflow updates in Blender 3.0. For. The NLA, Dope Sheet, and Timeline Editor now have a small descriptive redo panel, and it is now possible to mute drivers via a checkbox in the driver editor and edit driver popover. Grease Pencil isn't left out, it sees more substantial changes, including the new algorithm for closing gaps between paint strokes when coloring line arts using the fill tool. Other new features include an outline modifier for generating a parameter stroke for the camera view and the option to import multiple SVG files in one go. 
I couldn't have ended this video without speaking on the bonus new features for motion graphics artists using Blender. Although they only occupy a single line in the official feature summary, there are quite a few changes to the way that Blender handles fonts in Blender 3.4. The existing two fonts have been replaced with a stack of new fonts to increase language coverage. Blender now supports the 44 languages most commonly used worldwide and add new symbols and icons. In addition, font thumbnails have been improved as has the display of the cursor when editing 3D text objects in the viewport. Good news for motion graphics artists or anyone else who works with taste. Okay, if you love this video, kindly don't forget to sub or like or share. See you in my next video.